And grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We have come to worship God who loved us before we were yet born, who knows us even better than we know ourselves, whose presence never leaves us and whose love for us never ceases. This is our God. Let us worship him together. We sing our first hymn, Bright the Vision That Delighted. Say together the opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we come together to bring our praises and love to you. We come to hear your word, to pray for the world that you have given to us, and to ask your forgiveness for the times we let you down. We pray that your Holy Spirit will fill our hearts with love, that we may always praise you. Amen. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for today, the second Sunday of Epiphany. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And together we confess our sins before God. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so together we receive God's forgiveness as we say, may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Our second hymn is one of my absolute favourites, There is a Redeemer. First reading from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord yet, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went down, went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We say together the jubilati. 
Oh, be joyful in the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading from St. John's Gospel. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the gospel of the Christ, uh, of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may remember a few years ago that the diocese encouraged churches to hold a national initiative called Back to Church Sunday. The idea was that each person should invite someone we already know to something we love. The initial focus was to invite back those who used to attend church but this was extended to inviting anyone who didn't usually go to church. If every regular attender at church invited one friend to church, the effect on church attendance would be immense. In fact, in 2009, the church welcomed 53,000 people on Back to Church Sunday, a 71% increase on 2008. There don't seem to be any figures for anything more recent than that. And I thought that this initiative had died out, but I found through the internet that this year's Back to Sunday, um, Back to Church Sunday is on the 19th of September. The publicity for this special day talks about the church sharing hope and healing in our community through the good news of Jesus Christ. A man who we'll call Jim got into trouble with the Inland Revenue and subsequently lost his business his wife, and was living under the threat of a custodial sentence. He was persuaded by his lifelong friend to go to church with him. Jim was at first reluctant, to say the least, not believing that church could help in any way to get him out of the nightmare he was living. But when he got to church, he found that the people there were pleasant to him and non-judgmental. He didn't understand much of the service and was unable to concentrate or to remember anything afterwards, but somehow it was a turning point in his life. Church became a lifeline for him, which sustained him through his prison sentence and helped him to pick his life up again afterwards. 
In the reading from St John's Gospel, Jesus did not directly call Nathaniel to be one of the twelve. He called Philip. It sounds from the Gospel reading as though Jesus actively sought out Philip to invite him to become one of the inner band of apostles, just as he had deliberately invited Andrew the previous day. In the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke, Jesus calls people from their work to follow him. But here in John's Gospel, Jesus calls disciples of John the Baptist to change their religious allegiance in order to follow Jesus. Andrew brought his brother Simon to Jesus and in today's reading, Philip seeks out his friend Nathaniel, telling Nathaniel that Jesus is the long awaited Messiah. But Nathaniel is highly skeptical, a bit like Jim was, and laughs in Philip's face. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth, he mocks. But despite his scepticism, Nathaniel went with his friend and met Jesus. As soon as Jesus spotted Nathaniel, he saw a young man who was straight and honest and upright, someone who might be outspoken in his views, but who bore no malice and who would be a loyal and faithful supporter. Remember that Jesus once told his disciples that in order to enter the kingdom, they must receive it just like a little child. So perhaps it was this characteristic of open transparency, which Jesus saw also in Nathanael. And just as a little child is instantly trusting, so Nathanael immediately trusts and believes in Jesus, simply because Jesus told Nathanael that he saw him standing under the fig tree where Philip found him. But Nathanael was instantly aware that this was much more than a clever display of clairvoyance. Nathanael was conscious that Jesus actually knew him through and through, even though they had never met before. That was enough for Nathanael. He didn't bother to ask questions. He gave himself wholly to Jesus and exactly what Jesus foresaw, um, a loyal and faithful supporter. Nathanael is not mentioned in any other gospel but it's thought to be the Bartholomew of the other three Gospels and of Acts. It may be that Bartholomew, son of Tholomew, was his surname, such as uh, much as Simon's surname was Bar-Jonah. Nathaniel, Bartholomew, went on to become a missionary, carrying news of Jesus to Syria and Asia Minor. He was eventually martyred in Great Armenia and remains the, the, the patron saint of Armenia today. Nathaniel came to faith through his friend. Philip did not urge him or cajole him into following Jesus, but merely shared his own excitement and invited Nathaniel to see for himself. Philip did no more. Jesus did all the rest. As soon as Nathaniel met Jesus for himself, he believed. Peter, John, Matthew, Philip and Nathaniel were prepared to leave their homes and livelihoods to follow Jesus. Why? Because something about his summons rang truly deep within. Something about the man and his message, his words and deeds answered a primal need, their yearning for meaning and purpose to their lives. In Jesus, they'd found the answer to humankind's inbuilt hunger for a spiritual dimension to life, a hunger that even today in our supposedly secular world is still widely apparent. Like us, they still struggled at times with faith, still had their doubts and questions, yet they knew also in their heart of hearts that Jesus offered the word of life, a call to which they, like we, must respond. As Christians, all we are required to do is share our excitement about Jesus and invite our friends to come with us. Once they meet Jesus for themselves, they too may believe, for Jesus does all the rest. Jesus can see the potential within every person and can bring that potential to fruition. But he needs us to say to our friends, come and see. A story you may have heard before, but it says so much. A young man regularly visited a retired priest for spiritual direction. 
On one such visit, whilst they were sitting in front of a warming fire, the young man told the priest that he hadn't been to church for some time, that somehow he had lost heart. The old priest didn't say a word, but reached into the fire with the fire tongs, removed a red hot glowing coal and placed it on the hearth. The coal quickly turned black and cold. The priest then placed the coal back in the fire where it quickly became red and warm again. No words were necessary. Christ dwells within us, but for those who have not yet to come to know him, we need, they need to be invited to share what Christ offers us all. I'm going to end with Psalm 84, just the first four verses. Those who um, have been at St Mary's for many years will know this as a prayer that we say, or psalm we say, before every service there. Although I think that probably has changed now. But because I said it for some 20 odd years, it is very much deep within me. Psalm 84, verses 1 to 4. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing to enter the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a home, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. At your altar, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house. They will be always praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you and in whose heart are your ways. And much as we appreciate and love our time together on Zoom, let's all look forward to the time when we can be in our churches again. Amen. And so let us declare our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Let us pray. As Jean reminded us a few hours ago following last Sunday's service, we witnessed the tragic death of Nigel. Prayer was an integral part of Nigel's DNA. He was always searching for ways to develop prayer. Today's intercessions are about the seeds of prayer, such an important part of Nigel's life. Jesus often used the images of seeds to illustrate his teaching that small things have great potential, including small seeds of faith. Imagine then that at this time of intercession, you're planting seeds of prayer in the garden of God's love laid out before you. First of all, plant seeds of prayer for your family and close, close friends. These are the ones you care deeply about, knowing them well, all their traits, good and not so good. You know their needs today and their challenges, and you have such hopes for them. Plant these seeds of prayer for them now and trust in God to bring about the, uh, about the growth. Now plant some seeds of prayer for people you know less well, but who are part of the tapestry of your life. They may be people you know through a charity or a community group. They may be neighbours with whom you exchange cheerful greetings 
but not much more perhaps, or perhaps people you see regularly at the shops or when out walking the dog. See who comes to mind. Plant seeds of prayer for these people who you don't usually pray for, but whom God lays on your heart. Now plant seeds of prayer for those who are in the public eye, the good or ill. People in the news, political leaders under constant pressure, sportsmen and women with great expectations laid on them, celebrities with huge temptations to believe their own publicity. Who catches your eye? Who might in, be in particular need of support and wisdom at present? Plant seeds of prayer for some of, the, for some of those people now. Further away in the garden of God's love, seeds of prayer are needed for places and nations collapsing under the pressure of war, famine, natural disaster or bad government. Take a handful of seeds and plant them well, for this is where seeds get trampled on and birds eat them up. Plant these seeds deep and water them well, and be prepared to return often to care for the fragile early growth. You have seeds left over. Cast them wide over the whole garden, for we have a world deeply in the need of prayer at all points and at all times. Cast these seeds with love and joy, for this is our privilege to work with God to sustain and the world in anticipation of a new creation, a new Eden. You have one seed left. At your feet is a special patch of soil where you can plant a seed of prayer for yourself. What does your heart seek? What do you feel? What do you need most? Plant that seed now. Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you'll say to the mountain, move from here to there and it will move. May it be so with these prayers, Lord, which we offer in Jesus' name. We say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be by thy name. Thine kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn, as you can see, is just uh, one verse. So we're going to sing it through twice. You are the King of glory.
God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in him, so that we may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, for the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with us all and abide with us always. Amen. We say together dis the dismissal. Let us go out into the world to live our lives for God, to follow Jesus and to listen to the Holy Spirit as he guides us, that we may know Jesus more fully and live our lives for him, filled with his joy and love. Amen.